Well, hey, Ocean family, it's good to be with you today. We are in the month of December, and I mean, I'm telling you, the countdown is on to Christmas. Parents, it's coming. Whether we're ready or not, it's coming. But we're so excited about all that God is doing in our church this month. Pastor Jonathan really told you about what God's doing, and man, like the, the toy drive is going great. We're going to be able to bless so many families this year. Year. And Christmas nights was fun last night. I know some of you were watching the football games last night, so that's okay. But hey, come out next week because there's lots of fun things for the whole family. And then it's all building up to our Christmas Eve candle lighting services. And that's going to be such a beautiful time just to be in the presence of the Lord. And I think in the midst of all the hustle and bustle, we're going to be able to kind of slow down and just experience the presence of the Lord. So so we're so excited about what the Lord's doing in our church this month. And all throughout this month, we're going to be in a series that we're kicking off today. And it's called um, A Gift Given. And I believe that God's going to speak to you through this series. So come every week with just faith in your heart and an expectation. I know that God is going to speak to you throughout this month. But today is a special day because today is one day to feed the world just like you saw in the video. Churches all across the U.S. are participating in One Day to Feed the World, and we're going to participate in that as well. This is put on by Convoy of Hope, and if you didn't know, Convoy is one of our global partners. Now, I have the honor and the privilege of getting to be our missions pastor, so I get to interact with our missionaries all around the world that we support, as well as our global and local Local partners. And I want you guys to know that we feel especially close to Convoy of Hope. Convoy focuses on feeding the hungry and on disaster relief. So if there is a hurricane or a typhoon or a flood anywhere in the world, Convoy shows up usually pretty quick within 24 to 48 hours and they have supplies to help people in need. They also focus on feeding hungry children all around the world. They go into these remote villages where the kids are malnourished and they give them hot meals and vitamins, all the macronutrients and micronutrients that they need, all the nutrients. And when, they're, when their, their bellies are full, you know, and they're um, on their way to health and they're happier, then they share the gospel message with them. And the ministry that they do is just incredible. And it's so needed. I want to share a couple of numbers with you. And as I do this, don't just tune out. Like, just know, like, these numbers represent stories, okay? Um, there's an estimated 820 million people in the world who do not get enough food to sustain a healthy life. That's a lot of hungry people. There's 149 million children under the age of five um, who are too small for their age because of uh, poor diets. So Convoy is doing something about that. They give hot meals every school day to over 387,000 children. Isn't that incredible? They're serving, or they have served 481 million meals around the world. Take that, McDonald's. Come on. They've served over four and a half million people around the world, and they've mobilized over 677,000 volunteers in the U.S., and some of those volunteers are from Ocean Church. Yeah, come on. <laughs> if you were here during Hurricane Irma a few years back, then you know that Hurricane Irma devastated certain parts of our community. And Convoy of Hope was here within 24 hours. And they set up at our church and really transformed our church into a distribution center for all the local cities and counties. And over the process of about 10 days, they sent us 31 
semi trucks filled with supplies for us to give out um, to those in need in our community. And it was crazy. We had pastors wading out in waist high water carrying supplies to people in need. So we've seen firsthand what Convoy of Hope does and our community has been blessed by their ministries. So, um, so that ministry is very close to our hearts. All right, since today is one day to feed the world, I thought it would be great for us to take a look at Jesus and the way that he chose to feed the world. So today I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew 14, today we're gonna pick up where Pastor Josh left off last week with there is more. You know, he, he spoke to us from John chapter five and that was the same story in the book of John. John. Today, we're going to see it from a different perspective from the book of Matthew. And last week, Pastor Josh told us that we need to relate to the crowd in this story, that the crowd was desperate for Jesus and they canceled all their plans and moved everything around so that they could sit at the feet of Jesus. And that's where we're picking up from in the story today. Now, before we go to God's word, I want you to know, I want us to have an expectation in our hearts. The Bible says that God's word is living and active. And so that means that God's word is more than just words on a page. Okay, if you, if you believe that, say amen. Amen. God's word is more. And, and I believe that God is going to not only speak to us today, but that there's going to be fruit that comes out of that in our lives. Okay, so with expectation, stand to your feet for the reading of God's word. Those of you online, stand to your feet and let's turn to God's word. Matthew 14 verses 13 to 21. It says, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was, uh, where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day in addition to all the women and children. All right, lift your hands in faith and let's pray. God, I pray that your word would come alive in our hearts today. I pray that this would be your words and not mine. And I pray that you would do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Well, well, we see here in the story that the crowds were pursuing Jesus. They were following Jesus wherever he went. In fact, some of the people traveled long distances so that they could sit at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus, in this instance, was actually trying to get alone. You know, he had just received the news that his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded. John had been in prison and he had just been beheaded and Jesus received the news. So he's grieving the loss of his cousin and his heart was sad and heavy and he wanted to be alone. But when he, when the boat came to the shore and he saw the crowds and he knew how far they had traveled and he saw their desperation and their hunger for him, he couldn't help himself. He jumped out of the boat and he went right into the crowd and began to minister to the people. He prayed for the sick. He healed the sick. He set the captives free. And it was such incredible ministry that was happening that day that they all forgot to eat. 
Now, I've never forgotten to eat a day in my life. Like food is kind of a priority, you know? So, but, but this must have been some incredible ministry that day. So Jesus is ministering to the people. And while he's doing that, the disciples were assessing things. They were assessing the crowds and assessing the time. And they decided that the service was going on too long. So they went up to Jesus and they said, Lord, we got to cut this off. We got to send the people away so that they can get some food. And Jesus does something that's completely unexpected. Jesus turns to the disciples and says, you need to feed the people. The disciples were taken off guard. They weren't expecting that. That was shocking to them. And they didn't know what to do with that. And it's because they were trying to look at it in the natural, but Jesus was inviting them into the supernatural. Jesus was inviting them into the miraculous. And and all they needed to do was just simply say yes. All they needed to do was step out in obedience. They didn't need to try to figure out how they were going to do it or the logistics of how they were going to feed all those people. That wasn't up to them. All they needed to do was just say yes. And that's the first thing that, that I want us to catch in this passage today is that when we step out in obedience, God meets us with the miraculous. You know, Jesus said to the disciples, you take care of this. You feed the people. There were 5,000 men there that day. Scholars believe with women and children, there would have been 15 to 20,000 people on the hillside that day. That's a lot of mouths to feed. That's a lot of people to be responsible for. And Jesus was saying to the disciples, you can do this. You know, you can feed the people. You get to be a part of the miracle that's about to take place. But they didn't understand it. You know, and they they couldn't comprehend it. And Jesus was calling them to obey when it didn't make sense. He was inviting them into the supernatural. He was telling them to do something shocking, but he wanted them to step out in obedience. You know, sometimes Jesus tells us to do things that are shocking. Um, Several years ago, we found out from one of our local outreach partners that in the city of Immokalee, they were desperate for shoes, men's shoes, women's shoes, kids' shoes, all of it. And this outreach center didn't have any stock And they didn't know what they were going to do. And when they told us about the need, we knew right away that God was telling us to do something shocking. That weekend, after the message, Pastor Ed was going to tell the people to take their shoes off and leave them at the doors. I'm serious. This is not a joke. We had bins set up next to all the exits and all the doors. And and we knew that this is something crazy. I mean, can you imagine? People were walking to their cars after church barefoot. They were going out to lunch after church with no shoes on. Now, don't worry. We're not going to do this today, okay? You get to keep your shoes. In fact, please keep your shoes on. Uh, but, But this was crazy. It was out there. But we knew that this is what God was telling us to do. And actually, there was a local pastor who heard what we were going to do, and he instructed us against it. Like, he was like, people are going to leave your church. They're going to be angry at you. This is foolish. You shouldn't do this. But we didn't listen to him because we knew that God was telling us to do this. So we stepped out in obedience. And let me tell you, when we did that, something happened within our people. Our people were so generous. They left their shoes by the door. And I'm talking expensive shoes. They were like Gucci high heels and all these expensive shoes and the bins next to the doors. Uh, The bins were overflowing with shoes. People who served in multiple services, they donated multiple pairs of shoes. As a staff, we challenged ourselves to to wear and donate our favorite shoes that weekend. People gave so many shoes that actually the next day when we came to the church, there were garbage bags filled with shoes that were tied around the door handles of the church. People had gone home and cleaned out their closets so that they would have more to give. 
And I want to tell you that there was a generosity that was already inside of our people. It was sitting inside of our people. And when we stepped out in obedience, it ignited that generosity. It ignited faith within our church. You know, sometimes Jesus calls you to do things that might sound crazy. It might not make sense, but he's calling you uh, to step out into the unknown because he wants to ignite your faith. When we step out in obedience, God meets us with the miraculous. Look at this in scripture. You know, Moses, um, God told Moses to hold his staff up over the waters. And when he did, the seas parted and the, the Israelites crossed over on dry land. Think about when the children of Israel came up on the city of Jericho and it was a fortified city and there were thick walls surrounding everything and God told them to do something crazy, to march around the city in silence and then give a shout of praise. And when they did that in obedience to the Lord, the walls came down and they experienced a tremendous victory. God tells his children all throughout the Bible, he tells his children to do crazy things, but he's trying to ignite their faith. He's inviting us into, into a supernatural work. And we need to settle this in our hearts that when God calls us to step out in obedience, he's going to meet us there with the miraculous. Maybe God's challenging you today. Maybe God's speaking something to your heart. You know, when you go to Target later on, God might tell you to go up to someone and offer to pray for them. Uh, maybe God will tell you this week to pay for, you know, the family in line behind you at Chick-fil-A. There's been times when, when we saved up money and then God told us to give it away. Whatever it is that the Lord is telling you to do, when you step out in obedience, God meets you with the miraculous. The second thing that we see here in the passage is that God can use anything. God can use anything. Look at what the Lord uses in this passage. It was a little boy's lunch, you know, just five little loaves of bread and two fish. And it wasn't much, but when the little boy lifted it up to Jesus, Jesus was able to multiply it and use it to bless all of the people. You might feel like you don't have much today, but it's okay because God can use anything. You know, um, what's funny about this story to me is that if this child was anything like my children, he probably complained about the lunch that his mom packed for him that day. All the moms in the room, I know you know what I'm talking about. Like I, I can just hear him in my head, you know, he probably was like, oh, mom, come on, bread and fish again. You know, like, do you know how stinky that is? All the other kids make fun of me. And all I want is a burger. You know, is that too much to ask? Like he probably didn't even want to take a lunch that day. But it didn't matter because God can use anything. Uh, before we moved here, Eric and I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we got to serve at this outreach center right in the heart of the inner city. And we had this big outreach that was coming up and God had given us all the food and all the clothes that we were going to give out to the people. Um, but we needed a way to get the word out into the community about what we were doing. And the church could not afford to have a sign printed, like the church didn't have any money. So we found this old piece of plywood sitting on the ground behind the church next to the dumpster. And so we painted it white and we stenciled on it with really big letters, free groceries, free clothes, free haircuts. And we put the, the day and the time of the event and we just set it out by the road. Well, sure enough, we had a thousand people that showed up for that outreach so then we said, okay, now we need to have smaller outreaches every Wednesday night. So we painted back over the sign again, and we stenciled on it, free groceries, free clothes, every Wednesday, 7 o'clock. We set it out by the road. Well, sure enough, people would come from all over the community every Wednesday night to the outreach. 
Every time we had a different outreach and we needed a sign for it, we would paint back over that same sign and stick it by the road. Like at one point, there were so many layers of paint on that. It was probably more paint than plywood, you know, at a certain point. But God used that sign to draw people to the church and to draw people to himself. One day there was a a man who had just gotten out of prison and um, he was hopeless. Like he, he was depressed. He didn't have any money. He couldn't get a job, didn't have any friends or family nearby. And he, he didn't know what to do. So the only thing he could think to do, because the only life that he had ever known was inside a prison cell. So the only thing he could think to do was to walk to the corner store and rob it in hopes that he would be arrested and put back into jail. And he didn't want to do this. He knew someone would probably get hurt, but it's the only thing he knew to do. So that day, as he was walking to the corner store to rob it and try to get arrested, he passed by a sign that was sitting next to the road that said, free groceries, free clothes, free haircuts. And he thought, well, if the sign's out, maybe there's people inside. And I'll never forget that day when he wandered into our church and he asked for help. And you could feel the heaviness in the air around him. I mean, it just such a such an oppression from the enemy. So one of our guys pulled him aside and counseled with him and talked and prayed with him. And he prayed and received Christ right then and there. And we took him to a facility where he was able to get help. God turned his life around. And what blows my mind is that God used our little sign, that dumpy piece of plywood, to get that guy's attention and to change his eternity. If God can use a sign, God can use anything. You may feel like you don't have much to give, but that's okay. When we offer up to Jesus the little that we have, he's able to bless it and multiply it to feed the people. God can use anything. And I want you to know today that it's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. Maybe some of you need to hear that so you can be released from an old way of thinking. It's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. That's why with one day to feed the world, the challenge that they give is that everybody would just give one day's wages. And you know, if you don't make much money, that's okay. God can use anything. And I want you to know today that it's not our responsibility to make sure that the miracle happens. You know, we don't have to try to control things. We don't have to try to manipulate the situation and make sure that it all happens the way we think it should. No, the the miracle is God's responsibility. Our, Our part in this is just simply to offer up to him what we have in obedience. God can use anything. And the final thing that we see in this passage today is that the miracle passes through our hands. I want you to take another look at verse 19 that we read earlier. It says, then the people, he told the people to sit down on the grass. Now I want to stop here for just a second. You know, when I was reading this this week, this really jumped out at me. And I, I think that Jesus told the people to sit down on the grass because he wanted them to be able to see clearly what he was about to do because he was about to do something significant. And I want to ask you this today. Have you positioned yourself in such a way that you can clearly see what the Lord is doing? Because I believe that once again, God is about to do something significant. Okay, that's free. Let's just move on. (laughs) Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. He looked up towards heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to whom? Who was it? The disciples who distributed it to the people. Now, this is so interesting because this gives us a glimpse into God's heart for outreach. Jesus did not have to use the disciples to give out the food. Jesus could have given the food out himself. Think about this for a second. Jesus could have caused the food to appear in people's hands. 
right? He could have, he could have turned the stones into bread. He could have caused it to rain down bread from heaven. Jesus could have performed this miracle any way that he wanted to, but the way that he chose to do it was that the miracle would pass through the hands of the disciples. This is God's heart for missions. When this happened, something shifted because now you and I have become the, the hands and the feet of Jesus. Now we, as the body of Christ, are called to distribute the resources that God gives us. God gives us resources and we give it out. He gives us more resources and we give it out. This is God's heart for missions. Listen. God feeds the world through his disciples. This was true then and it's true today, both spiritually and physically. God feeds the world through his disciples, through us. That's his heart, not to just do it himself, but to allow the miracle to pass through our hands. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of miracles pass through our hands here at Ocean Church. Eric and I have been here for 14 years. I thought it was 15 years, but we did the math the other day, and Eric was right. It's 14 years. <laughs> 14 years. And, um, you know, when we first came, I mean, there were barely 400 people here. And look at what the Lord has done. Look at how God has moved in our church. I've seen so much ministry take place through the years. God's been so good to us. You know, uh, several years ago, our church got to partner with a missionary named Darth Lee over in Cambodia to build a floating school for the children. So now there's children halfway around the world in Cambodia that have hope and a future. And God allowed that miracle to pass through our hands. Last year, during a global pandemic, our church gave over $800,000 to missions. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And you know what? We don't take credit for the miracle. All the glory goes to God. God does the miracle, but he allows us to partner with him in it. He allows us to be a part of what he's doing. Last year, God enabled our church to give $70,000 to Convoy of Hope to feed the children all around the world. That's incredible. But you know what? I believe there's more. I believe God's calling us to more, that God's done great things in the past. But I believe that there is more in the future that God is going to invite us into a couple of years ago, God laid it on our heart for us to uh, sponsor the Fire Bible in a, for an entire country, you know, in their language, to have it translated in their language so they could have the Word of God. But we didn't know what country to partner with. And then we met Pastor Merrick from Warsaw, Poland. And when we heard his heart for church planning in Poland, right away, God stirred it in our hearts. And we knew that we were supposed to sponsor the Polish Fire Bible. And next year in 2022, this will come to pass. We will release the Polish Fire Bible. God's using our church to take the gospel to an entire country. Hallelujah. God allows the miracle to pass through our hands. And we praise God for that. You know, I, I like to think about this. I think about the disciples on the hillside that day. And I think about, man, what stories do you think they told to their children and grandchildren years later? Or if they didn't have children, I don't know, maybe the ministry interns. But like, who did they tell the stories to? And in what stories did they tell of how the miracle passed through their hands that day? And I wanna ask you, what stories are you gonna to tell to your children and grandchildren of how the miracles pass through your hands? Are you gonna tell them about the Polish fire Bible? Are you gonna tell them about one day to feed the world? God invites us into this supernatural process. He, he allows the miracle to pass through our hands. Now, my, the, the burden that I feel this weekend um, to share with you 
as your missions pastor, but also as someone who's just been here and seen a lot, what I wanna tell you is that there is more. God's not done using our church to, to spread the gospel and to spread his resources. God has more for us. You know, I've shared a lot of stories with you today from the past. And, and I know I, that that's not so that we can live in the past. I did that intentionally by faith. You know, I, I emptied out all my stories. I shared all my stories, Pastor Jack. I know that it's reckless. I did, but you know why? Because God has more stories for us. God has better stories ahead for us. There is more that the Lord wants to do, more opportunities for us to step out in faith, more opportunities for us to be the hands and feet of Jesus, more opportunities to let the miracle pass through our hands. So today there's an opportunity for you to give. And now I'm not going to take up a second offering. We're not going to pass the buckets. It's nothing like that. You know, we, we spoke with you earlier about the tithe. This is not the tithe. That's something different. The tithe is set apart. That belongs to the Lord. What I'm talking about today is anything above and beyond the tithe that the Lord would tell you that you're to give. And please hear me in this. We don't want you to give anything more or less than what the Lord tells you. Only do what God tells you to do. And in that, we get to experience the blessing of the miracle passing through our hands. Now, with one day to feed the world, the, the challenge that they present, if the Lord leads you in this way, is to give one day's wages. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna make you do math today. There's a chart. They're gonna put the chart on the screen. So you can see um, what the breakdown is of that and see the numbers. And I wanna tell you that Eric and I have already given to this. We wanted to be the first ones to give. So we got up early yesterday morning and first thing we gave. And, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, it hurt, okay? There, there was a sacrifice to it. But remember, it's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. You know, we wanted to be obedient to what the Lord was telling us to do. We wanted to step out in obedience. And I want you to have that opportunity today too. So we're gonna give in the same way that we always give. Okay, if you like to use the app, use the app. If you like to use the website or text to give, do that. If you like to use the envelopes on the seat back pockets, you can use those and just drop them by the giving stations before you leave today. And everything that is earmarked as kingdom builders this weekend and this week leading up to Friday is gonna go to one day to feed the world. Okay, so if you want it to go towards that, make sure to designate it uh, as kingdom builders and we'll make sure that it gets there. And church, I wanna tell you, that there is more. I believe in the years to come, we're gonna give more to missions than we've ever given before. I, I believe that we are moving forward. We're not letting off on the gas when it comes to missions. We're moving forward in this thing. You know why? Because it's, it's in our DNA. This is who God has called us to be. God placed this within us and we're gonna step out in obedience. Bow your heads, I wanna pray for you. Lord, thank you that you invite us into this process. Thank you for choosing us, that you choose to feed the world and minister to the world through your disciples. So Jesus, we just, we offer up to you what we have and it may not be much, God, it may not be much, but we give it up to you. Lord, we wanna step out in obedience and whatever you're calling us to do. And Lord, I, I believe that there's someone either in the room or someone online and God is speaking to you that there is more, that God has more in store for your life. And if that's you right now, your heart's beating really fast and God's kind of already speaking that. And I just wanna affirm that, that, that I think God wants to tell somebody that individually today. But Lord, we respond to the call as a church and we're gonna step out in obedience however you lead us as your disciples, as your children, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.